Welcome to Northwest Air Guns. I'm John and today we're going to take a look at box five of the Airgun Charlie collection. I know you guys are saying, when is this guy going to get done with this? Uh, but the end is near. Uh, we've got this box five. I've got a box of show guns and a box of part guns. And then we're done. And at that point, I'll explain what we're going to do with all these uh, air guns that uh, we have here. But one thing I thought was kind of interesting, uh, this is unrelated to the gun collection, but you know, I've been doing YouTube's, uh, YouTube videos rather for five years, I think. I started in 2013. And the reason I started was because uh, I had a Super 10 and, and there's so little information and there's so little support for uh, BSA air guns here in the United States that I, you know, I thought it would be helpful uh, to others, and so I put up a YouTube channel and started tearing it apart and uh, looking at how it, you know, operated and the mechanical functions and whatnot. And so I never got into this for money, which is a good thing because uh, I never got any. But then uh, the other day I got a letter from Google, who I guess owns YouTube, and they said, well, you know, you've got money you've earned some money uh, from your channel here. And I thought, well, that's cool. You know, I've been here for almost five years. I must have, uh, must have accumulated a, a tidy sum. So, but I went on and, and looked it up, and sure enough, I did earn money. And uh, I'm eligible for $11.71. And I don't know what that translates into euros or other currencies, but... Um, that's my uh, <laughs> reward for the uh, for the uh, five years I've been doing this. So, uh, like I say, good thing I wasn't in it for the money. Okay, now to the air guns. Well, we're going to start with the spring guns that came out of box five, and I'm including these uh, BB guns in that. This is a Trail Boss Daisy a Model 960 toy gun, it says here. Um, yeah, kind of a, okay, well, if you're a daisy collector, that might be exciting, but for the rest of us, it's not that big a deal. This next one is another BB gun, and this is an uh, Upton Model 40, and this is a little bit uh, less common, I guess. It's uh, got the lettering. I'll show you. I'll zoom in and show you what it says here. Okay, there's the um, there's the lettering. It's an Upton Model 40, 1,000 shot. That's pretty impressive. Um, let's see, Upton Machine Company, uh, St. Joseph, Michigan, and there's the patent. So this gun's probably 100 years old, maybe early 19 teens. Loads here at the front in the tube. Um, it actually cocks. And not very powerful on the shooting part of it. I suspect that this is not original here. And this is probably not original here. But even if they're not original, they're not too much later than original, uh, given that the patina on the... Uh, bolt and the nut match the patina on the gun. So this is kind of a, I don't know, it's kind of cool to see what they were doing back in the early 1900s with the BB guns. Uh, <laughs> Charlie has it here at $1,500, made in 1922, he says. Uh, like I say, I would take 14 for it. Um, but that's kind of a cool gun just from a historical standpoint and you know it's well used you can tell somebody had a lot of fun with this over the years or maybe a lot of people had a lot of fun with it so that's the Upton 40 this is a Gamo Cadet um, I don't even know it's a well it's similar to a Daisy 120 I don't even, you know they're okay I don't even know why I took it out and showed it to you um, these two guns are both um, 
Dianas, although this one here is a Milbro. This is a Milbro or Daisy 230, which is the, uh, what is that, 177, 22 caliber. And again, this is Milbro in Scotland makes them, uh, four Daisy, and uh, it's an old Diana uh, pre-war uh, air gun, essentially. And it's in remarkably good shape. I'm really surprised. The bluing is excellent. I mean, really, there's a few marks on the stock, um, but it's really nice. Charlie says, uh, need seal. Well, that's probably so. This, this one would have leather seals on the piston and the breech seal. Missing the breech seal. But that's in nice shape. Um, so, I don't know, this would be a good gun for a kid. And this one would also, this is actually a Diana, um, but it's marked as a Winchester model 416. This would have been the Diana 4, no, excuse me, the Diana 16. And it uh, similarly is in pretty good shape. It has a crack in the stock here, but everything else is uh, intact. And these had a, a liner. I'll zoom in here, we'll take a look at this. These guns were kind of interesting. They had a brass liner in the barrel. And um, you can see it at, at the front end. Well, you can't see it, but anyway, they have this uh, liner in the barrel that's made out of brass. And I don't know if it's rifled. It looks like it's rifled. But a very small piston, very easy to caulk. I don't know how accurate it is. There's no safety on this. Um, this is a nice light little gun. It would be a good one for a younger shooter, a kid. Um, like I say, there's no safety. The safety's between your ears. So that's, um, I think, something that for training younger people is to use their head in addition to the mechanical safeties here. Um, and this is a, uh, like I say, a good youth gun. It's a step up from something like this in terms of uh, accuracy and probably power too and sophistication. So nice little gun. All right, well, continuing on, um, one of these objects is unlike the others, uh, and the other three are very similar. As a matter of fact, the same. Uh, let's look at the oddball here for a second. And that would be uh, this one. This is a Crossman 22 Model 120. And actually, I mean, it looks kind of ugly, I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, and you know, the stock is, is really rough looking. Uh, but somebody refinished the, uh, all the metal and the metal part of it looks pretty good. Uh, they did a nice job on it. You can see it's starting to chip away right here. And underneath looks like it's uh, brass. I'm going to zoom in. We'll take a look at a couple of oddball things on this one. One thing that, you know, if you're going to restore a rifle and go to all the trouble of uh, making the uh, finish look good again. And like I say, there's a little chip right here. So it's brass underneath looks like. But this is not the original bolt uh, knob, I don't think. Matter of fact, it's uh, a piece of metal held on, held on by a, uh, a washer and a screw in the back. And I don't know if this is the original bolt or not. It looks kind of, well, it doesn't even retract. So I don't know what's going on there. Uh, somebody got the idea of spraying it with the silver spray paint it would look cool. So I got to find a new bolt for it. Um, and there's no sights either. If you look, there's supposed to be a rear sight here and that's missing. And then to top it off, it's got uh, lever droop too, which is never good. But, you know, the linkage has been replaced here and it looks okay. Not a lot of play, a little bit of play here, I guess. But it doesn't pump up. 
this is not original, the bolt anyway. Uh, so kind of a basket case in some ways, but in other ways, um, you know, it's intact. We can get it back working again and it'll be a, a, a nice looking gun. Model 120, 1952-54. So there's that one. And then we have these three. And these are all model 1400s, I think. No. <clears throat> this is a 147. This is a 1400. And this is a 1400. So we got the we got the two 1400s and the 147. And they're all, I wouldn't say recent vintage, uh, but they all have the uh, safety here, the updated trigger unit. Uh, they're all similar in terms of the uh, cover here. Uh, I don't know if they pump up yet or not. I haven't tried them. They've all got the rear sights on them. Uh, so these are nice guns. You know, the thing about these I've got, including these and the other ones in the Ergen Charlie collection, I must have 10 of these, uh, or maybe more. I don't know. I'll have to put them together and count them up. But, you know, that tells me that I'm really not a collector. I'm just a hoarder. Let's see what Charlie had to say. Everything here is excellent condition, according to Charlie. 130 bucks for that one. This one, rare, 177, $160 for the, uh, for the 147. And then this one here, uh, back to 130. It needs uh, the link. Oh yeah, here we go. This is, let's take a look at this. So in that, at last video, uh, we had some Benjis, and I mentioned about, if I look at them, there's a couple of things I look for. Well, any of the pneumatics, the pump-ups, uh, I want to look at the link, because you find stuff like this. This is not uh, factory here. Somebody lost the rivet, or for whatever reason, decided to change it, and, uh, and so it's got a screw on this side and a nut on that side. In an order, because it doesn't fit, you know, that would not fit through the slot in the tube. In order to make it fit, they uh, ground out a spot there so that they could do it. So there's a just a kind of a classic, that one. This one looks good. Actually, it looks real good. And this one here, it looks good too, but it, it seems like it's a little droopy doesn't snap up very well. So anyway, that's the pumpers in this uh, box number five. All right, continuing with box five, we're, we're into the CO2 uh, rifles now. Uh, this one is kind of interesting. It's a Daisy um, Powerline 889 CO2, and it's a pump gun. Anyway, it has uh, English and then Spanish. And pretty sure this gun was made in Spain. I'm almost positive. I, yeah, made in Spain. So I don't know who made it, but it's kind of a cool gun. Um, it's got a... Now, well, let's take a look at it. This may have been Daisy's answer to the uh, Crossman 622 because it's, it's nice wood. It's got a nice... Uh, a strong, uh, robust feel to it. And the magazine on this one is up here. And then you would load your uh, 177 pellets, I guess right here. And then release the follower. Oops, that snuck up on me there. And then uh, if you notice there's a cam here, which comes over and picks up the pellet and moves it over into the barrel. So it's a kind of a pump look-alike um, and an interesting gun in some ways. I don't know if it's any good or not, but it's probably fun to shoot. 
CO2 makes it a lot easier since you don't have to provide the power. Um, anyway, that's Daisy 889, and I couldn't find a reference to that in the uh, blue book. Okay, the rest of these, uh, these three are Crossman's. Get rid of this one first. This is a Benjamin, uh, what is it, 3030? 3030, CO2 carbine repeater BB. And uh, the BBs, let's see, that's caulked. And it, that's, I guess you put it up here and load the BBs. And then you're ready to shoot and just fire. Um, CO2, eh, I can't get this one out, but it, it goes in the end. You can just see the back end of the CO2 uh, powerlet. And then you put this cover on and screw it in, tighten it up. This one's been uh, pretty heavily tightened, looks like. So I don't know if this works or not, but these are kind of fun in a way. You just, you know, when they're working, that's the thing about these Benjamin. Uh, when they're working, they're pretty fun. Otherwise, eh, not so much. And these take the little small 8-gram uh, powerlets, too, instead of the 12s. The gun itself is in pretty good shape, and the stock's a little rough, but the biggest uh, thing that's uh, wrong with it or deteriorated is the uh, cover here. So we've got these uh, three Crossmans here. Uh, these two are 180s, I think. Uh, 180. This is a 180. You know, we've looked at these before uh, in the collection. Um, nothing remarkable about either one of them. And then the last one here is the uh, 400, Crossman 400. And these are kind of uh, interesting guns. There, it's a repeater, CO2 here, the, where you put the CO2 powerlets in. 22 caliber, and it has kind of an interesting mechanism. I guess I'm a kind of a sucker for repeaters, so we'll we'll pull in here and take a look at that. You know, all of the air gun manufacturers were were always trying to figure out ways to um, build a repeating function into these guns and. For one thing, they're more fun, repeaters are, than the single shots. But it also means you can sell more pellets because, you know, they'll be shooting more and more CO2. Um, and CO2 guns in repeaters kind of make sense. The pumpers, to me, if you have to pump, um, the repeating function is really kind of silly, to my way of thinking. Um, I just never got used to it. And then you know, sometimes you have to shake them to get the BBs or the pellets in the right location. And like that Crossman 102 we looked at the other day, I mean, why have to pump eight times? And then, yes, it's a repeater, but um, it, it's just not as functional in my mind as, as a CO2 gun with a repeater. Um, and this one is missing the magazine. The magazine is a tube that goes right here. And as you... Uh, cycle the bolt, you can see that this, uh, I don't know what you call this, but there's a cam up here that this pulls out. The uh, tube is here, the magazine, it puts another pellet in, and then that shifts it over to the barrel, and you're ready to shoot. Uh, actually, this one cocks here in the back. So it's not, this. all this does is cycle the action, put the pellet in, and then this is how you caulk it. Again, through uh, stock safety on this one. So this is a, a step up uh, from having to pump every time. Uh, a lot of these around, but a lot of them are missing this magazine. So we'll have to figure out what to do about that. But these are kind of fun guns and, and uh, pretty basic. Not a lot to go wrong with them. This one says uh, leaks. Okay, that's always... Good to know, four hundred and fifty dollars, and that's um, that is a good example of optimism there because it doesn't even have the magazine, and it's it's in okay shape but not great shape. So and it leaks. 
All right, well, this is another one of those where you say uh, one of these is not like the other two. So let's set these two aside for a second and look at this one. This is a Crossman 160, and uh, let's see. Works good, Charlie says. $230, and it's missing the uh, pad on the butt. Um, and these are originally, I think, uh, developed by Crossman as kind of a target gun, and they used to use these in the military for uh, trainers, if I'm not mistaken. And they're kind of nice guns. CO2 goes in here, and um, load, and they actually cock on the forward stroke, and it has an automatic safety. Oh, doesn't have a safety at all, come to think of it. Uh, so there's supposed to be a safety there, and I think, um, if I remember right, looking through the parts uh, thing that Charlie had, there was a safety. Maybe that's for this. But anyway, that's how it works. It, these are really nice rifles, and they're not too heavy, but um, they're heavy enough for target work and pretty darn accurate too. You know, maybe not by the standards of today's uh, pre-charge guns, but uh, as of the time, they were pretty nice guns. So what happens is uh, when you have something that's good, people tend to copy it. And here we have two of the uh, industry brand QB78s. And these are pretty much direct copies of the uh, Crossman, with the exception of the trigger and the safety unit here would be different than the, than the old Crossman. But a matter of fact, a lot of the parts um, from these QB78s can be interchanged with parts from the uh, Crossman 160. Um, and so these are, these are not replicas, but sort of, but they operate basically the same way, caulk on the forward stroke, um, and then there's the safety here. And we got two of these, and I don't know that they've ever been used. They look new, although there's a few scuff marks from handling. All the bluing, everything is uh, perfect. So I think these are pretty much brand new. I don't know what Charlie paid for them, but he's got them listed here at 75 bucks, and that sounds... That sounds about right to me. Um, so that concludes box number five. We have, like I say, a couple more boxes. We're going to wrap this up, and uh, I'll be putting out a couple more videos. Uh, what I'd like to do is for the subscribers to the channel, uh, you know, we'll we'll go through all of this stuff and and uh, try and get it up on a web page where you can buy them for what I think are reasonable prices. Some of the stuff that I don't know what it's worth uh, will go to eBay or a gun broker or one of the auction sites. Um, and as a matter of fact, I've got a couple of things up there already. The Daisy 21 shotgun is up there. Uh, just because I don't have any idea what it's worth, so we'll find out. Um, but I would like, you know, if you, I'd like to do a reward kind of thing for those of you who've sat through all of these videos looking at this, and I, I've had a blast doing it. I hope you have too. Um, but I do have to get some of my investment back out of this, and uh, like I say, as kind of a reward for uh, subscribers to the channel. We'll put them up and give you first shot at them at a reduced price before they go public. And I'll, I'll get into that later on uh, when we get through the other two boxes here. And we're gonna have a video coming out pretty soon we're going to call it uh, How to Make Big Bucks with Your YouTube Channel. <laughs>